Michael Clark. Shot is good. Clark's been their top point getter in each of the first two games. Tied with Richards, and he's off to a good start here. Ram Russell answers quickly. To give him that shot is uh, quite dangerous. He's quite good from that area, as he's proven. The Saga nearly steals from Piercy. 11.55 to go. 23 to 10. The visiting Regina Knights off to a very good start. Smallwood in the game now. Shot is up and no good. Fights for the rebound, but Crosley gets it. Smallwood offers some more height on the court for the Huskies. Lasaga off the back of the rim for three. And Smallwood there. Always a rebounding presence with his height. Knights still with their starting five out there. The Huskies have made a few changes. And Frank White has called on the hold. And that's two on him. And Don, it appears as though these officials are going to be pretty tight uh, with the calls in this one. Well, definitely. I think that's a, a big factor. You can't let a player walk all over another player and, and mug him. The referees are trying to lay that down here right away. Shannon Richards goes all the way inside and makes the shot. Put it over the outstretched defender. That's four for Richards. And the lead is 11. Well, Shannon Richards has discovered what the Herman squad are going to do. They can't rely on the outside shooting as much. They've got to get those guards to drive to the basket more. And I think that's what you're going to see in this game. Crosley just traveled on offense, so the Huskies will get the ball back, trying to reduce the deficit to single digits. They trail by 11. Sweet Apple. That's up, and it's good. Jason Trask, number 12 on the court for the Knights during that last stoppage. Lasaga being hounded by Piercy, and the Huskies appear to have a bit of a rally. Clark, outside, no good, rebound, and over the top, I believe we have Lasaga called for the foul, and the Knights uh, beginning to get a few fouls to their name. That was Lasaga's first. Hey, Regina likes to call a timeout. I think Ed Buckle's going to tell his team to be careful of those fouls. They've got 16 fouls already after the next foul, or rather the seventh foul. The Herdman Huskies will be in a bonus situation. It's 10 minutes and 39 seconds left in the first half, and Ed Buckle doesn't want to get into a bonus situation with too much time left in the first half. So he's telling his team, be careful, play aggressive, and play tough defense, but just don't take stupid fouls. And one of the more creative signs here again at uh, Herdman Collegiate. We've seen a number of good signs, Rick, at the two schools thus far in the series. The Herdman fans with a little shot on Bram Russell the of the Regina Knights. Certainly no lack of enthusiasm, that's for sure. Everyone here enjoying these uh, flying ball games. School spirit never more evident. And Russell going to check out of the game, being replaced by Mark Joyce on that last time out for the Regina Knights. Huskies had to be pleased with their last couple of times down the floor getting buckets from Richards and Sweet Apple and Michael Clark, three of their main guns. Now the question is, can they get that on a more regular basis? There's Sweet Apple, he'll shoot over, and that's no good. Joyce, some tough defense there. Long pass, power, loses it out of bounds. All of a sudden, the Knights who were Looking so smooth on offense in the early going, uh, turning the ball over these last few trips down the floor. Well, as I mentioned, I think Regina is just a matter of they got overconfident. They were up by a big margin, and they thought that they had this game well in hand, and Herbin was showing that they can come right back and speed up and get to his fourth point of this game. The lead now seven. Lasaga being watched by Richards. Trask. Power into Joyce. On Clark, blocked away by Sweet Apple. Richards is mugged from behind. Mark Joyce with the foul. And yeah. Steve Cave checks in for TJ Power. Joyce decided he was going to take it to the basket there, had Clark beat, but Sweet Apple shifted over nicely to get the block. 
and the Huskies moved the ball down the court quickly, and Richards was fouled. And this is what I was talking about, Regina getting themselves in foul trouble. Nine minutes, 44 seconds left in the first half. Uh, the next defensive foul by the Knights, and Herbin will go in the bonus situation and shoot one and one. Richards missed the shot. Lasega for three. Off the front of the rim, Joyce tips it. Cave tries to save it, but it goes into Percy's hands, and the Huskies will come back down the court again. They'll set up a play here. Shannon Richards. They've got Cave on the chuck. As we mentioned, the referee getting the signal that this is a bonus situation. Shannon Richards will go to the line and shoot one and one. Should explain in the bonus situation, the player gets possibly two shots. If he makes the first shot, he gets a second. If he misses the first shot, the, the teams are able to rebound that ball. Richards is good on the first. That's his fifth point. And the lead has been reduced to six. 23-17 your score, 9-18 to go in half number one. Gina Knights leading the Herdman Huskies. Second shot is short. And a lane violation there by Mark Joyce. Shannon Richards will get that shot over again. Dangerous man to give a second opportunity to though, Don. But Richards does not connect. Knights have really been hard-pressed to get some good scoring opportunities in the past few minutes. Not a whole lot going down from their perspective. Blake Crosley out of the top of the key. Not much danger there. He'll move down on Sweet Apple. Lasaga, nice pass to Cave. He's going to have to take that one, and it's good. Steve Cave with a big bucket. And that's Steve Cave's first points of this series. He went scoreless in the first two games. Michael Clark has the ball tipped away by Lasaga, gets it back. Stephen Piercy down low to Sweet Apple, and we have Crosley over the top, and he'll be called for the foul. That's his first. And with it being the bonus situation, Sweet Apple will go to the line. Sweet Apple misses. No one seemed to be playing that one. It was the one and one. There. And another foul. This one on Mark Joyce. The Knights running into all kinds of foul troubles. White, Joyce, and Russell each with two. Think of that last shot by uh, Sweet Apple. The team might have thought that he was shooting two, and he, as he might have gone, gotten the foul as he was going to the basket. But Wayne Robertson said he wasn't going to the basket, and he shot one and one. That's the confusion. Michael Clark will try again. Now, he was fouled in the act of shooting, so therefore, automatically two shots. And Don, uh, the Huskies being hurt by their own free throws, but Richards will try for three. Off the back of the rim, Lasega eyeing the court, takes it. Choice. Offensive move, goes up with it, and is fouled. The call is on Michael Clark. So there was a prime example there of the Huskies uh, not being able to take advantage of some gift opportunities. Well, certainly they've, uh, they're only down by eight points in this contest, and free throws could uh, decide uh, this contest as it comes down to the wire. And the Herman's probably got to start connecting a little more. Mark Joyce has the first shot rim out. Score remains 25-17, 8.24 to go. Knights enjoying an eight-point advantage. Second shot is no good. And both teams hurting themselves with some missed free throws here in the last minute. Michael Clark with a nice individual effort. Drove baseline, got the layup. That's six for him, and more importantly, the lead is now cut to six. Trask, down low to Crosley, up against a wall. Shot is no good but he was fouled in the process. And they call it on Clark. 
That's two on him, and the Huskies don't want to see him get in any foul difficulty. He's one of their better offensive threats. Michael Barrett will come back into this one. You see the last basket by Herman as Michael Clark just drove the baseline. Regina were doing a good job in the opening edge of this game. Bram Russell blocking the baseline, denying a Herman players an opportunity to drive for that basket. They seem to be lacking in that department a little bit more as we saw in that last basket when Clark just drove the baseline and came up on a niche to get the easy two points. Crosley is smooth on the first shot and he's even smoother on the second. Give him eight points. That ties him with Frank White for the team lead. And the Knights enjoy an eight-point lead. Really mix up there. Sweet Apple almost banging into Richards, but he kept possession. Piercy being watched closely by Cave. Back of Richards. Working on Trask, and they've got him on the hold. And Jason Trask getting called with the foul on that opportunity. Richards is tough to uh, keep track of for any defender. He's got a variety of moves, always dangerous, and he'll go to the line. Shannon Richards, one for two in this game from the line thus far. He hits that one, 27 to 20, six points for Richards. And Richards takes over the team lead with seven. Michael Clark has six. Steve Cave brings the ball up. Steve Rumbold is checked into the game. Number eight for the Knights. Trask to Rumble, who, as we mentioned, just checked in. Cave. Crosley setting a pick on Barrett to try to free Rumble. There's Crosley. And it's good. And Blake Crosley has hit double digits. Ten points. Richards. Barrett. Knocked away. And that'll be night ball. Barrett tried the baseline drive just like Clark did a couple of minutes ago, but Cronsley was there to make the defensive play. Nice effort by Steve K behind the back dribble. Missed the shot. Crosley underneath, fouled. And they've got him on a travel. Well, that time Blake Crosley wasn't sure if he was going to go to the basket or not. He kind of danced around the key for a couple of seconds and then managed to go for the basket. But by that time, referee Orham. Elected to call the traveler. Steve Cave with his second foul. Got Piercy from behind as he was attempting the shot. Yeah, the travel by Crosley, he was in very good position. He got the ball exactly where he would have wanted it. He tried to get position, though, underneath the basket. He, he went up for the initial shot, and he saw he was covered. And by that time, his feet moved in the key. Piercy is short with the first free throw. T.J. Power back into the game, replacing Lasega. And the second shot by Piercy is good. 6.35 to go, 29 to 22. Regina Knights leading Herdman, game three. Series all deadlocked at a game apiece. Rumble. Shot is off the mark. Rebound comes out to Richards, and he may move with it. And he gets the basket. Shannon Richards simply beating the defenders up the court. And he likes those open court situations where he can really get moving. Five point lead. Tipped away by Sweet Apple to Piercy, and he's fouled by Cade. And this crowd definitely back into it. And Steve Cave with his third foul as, as Coach Ed Buckle, the Regina Knights, calls the timeout to settle his troops down a little bit. But that's the third foul by Steve Cave, and it's very important. He's one of the key players for the Regina squad. He's, what, I guess, what you call the sixth man, the first guy to uh, enter the game off the bench. He's, Regina tends to use the three-man guard system with Lasaga and Power starting the contest. Steve Cave usually checks in midway through the first half for either Lasaga or Power. So with three fouls in this game, it could prove costly in the second half when Regina has to go deeper into their bench to find a third guard to give Lasaga or Power a rest. 
You saw a replay of the Shannon Richards bucket. He's got nine, but uh, more importantly, it seems like a lot more of his shots in this game are, are coming from uh, well within his range. There aren't so many wild three-pointers, and I guess in game two it was dictated by the score, but he seems to be playing more within himself in this one, Don. Well, I think that's the big thing. Shannon Richards hasn't been too hot from the three-point range in the first two games of this series. In the first two games, he kept trying. Even though he was missing, he kept trying and kept trying instead of trying to work that ball in. I think this time he's trying to work the ball in a little more and it's benefiting the Herman squad. Well, Percy, after missing his first free throw, has netted the last two, nothing but mesh, and he'll try again. And he's got the touch from there. Three points for Piercy, and the score, 29-26. The Huskies have slowly but surely worked their way back into this one. Trask from outside, big bucket. He was left wide open and didn't have much choice but to take that one. Richards to Barrett. Barrett will try from the baseline. Double Rimmer comes out. Sweet Apple the rebound, and that's good. Well, there it is. Mark Sweet Apple's going to be getting more rebounds like that underneath the basket. Parked in front to try to get those offensive rebounds and put them up. Well, that was simply a matter of him having the better positioning on Crosley, and it paid off in two points. Power, another air ball from outside. Well, that's twice in this game, T.J. Power has tried to put up a shot from three-point range and come way short of the basket. Now, T.J. can usually hit those shots and come near putting them in, but uh, this game he hasn't been coming close. That's Michael Barrick is called on the travel there. Mark Choice coming back into this one. Blake Crosley will get a breather. Well, Regina coach Ed Buckle taking a big chance right here. He's got, he's up by four points and yet he's only got one starter on the floor, that being TJ Power. Mark Choice hits a big basket. Michael Clark getting ready to come back into this one. Big turnover now. Joyce takes it to the hoop. Good effort on the layup. Excellent save by Power. Down low to Power, but he can't save it that time. It goes crumbling into the wall. And a substitution as Michael Clark checks into the game. And Michael Barrett checks out. As we mentioned, the bench playing a key role in this contest for both teams. Herdman was just one starter out there, and TJ Power and Regina ha and uh, Regina rather has TJ Power out there starting, and Herdman with Shannon Richards, Michael Clark, and Mark Sweetapple. Joyce tried it again. They're giving him that shot, and he's deciding to take it this game. In the first two encounters, he had been a bit tentative. There's one man who's not tentative, Shannon Richards. Shot out the back of the rim. Good rebound by Rumbold. Power made look to rush it. He'll move it in, and Sweet Apple is there to knock it away. And and TJ Power takes his second foul. That time, he was called on the offensive foul, charging in. Although Mark Sweetapple made a nice play to block that shot as uh, Power worked his way in and tried to go up. Lovely pass from Sweetapple to Smallwood who missed the layup, but Sweetapple's there and he misses. And a couple of big chances for the Huskies. Well, Herman's going to start making those shots when you get two big men underneath like that and they both miss easy shots. Cave, he's left open. Nice move down the key. And the shot is good. Steve Cave contributing. Back in the game even with the three fouls. Knights reopen a seven-point lead. Here's Richards, and that's good, and Shannon Richards hits double digits with 11. Power to Joyce. Joyce firing again from outside, and he's good. Mark Joyce. Any offensive help they get from him is certainly appreciated, Don. 
Certainly a gutsy move there, just inside the three-point marker. And he put it up and got all net. Lead back to seven. Clark reduces it to five. And both teams begin to heat up a little bit. Well, certainly you've got to give Herbin full credit. They were down by 13 points at one point in this half, and they've rallied to come back. Good rebound by Rumble. Cave tried the three. No good. Sweet Apple working hard. Joyce steals. Misses the layup. Wild scramble. Power gets it, and it's stolen by Piercy. Richards hustles up court. Shot is no good. Foul over the top is called on Rumble. Steve Rumble with his first foul. But both teams certainly not lacking from a work ethic point of view. Well, certainly Regina is going to get themselves, they're going to find they're going to be in trouble in the second half. They've got 15 fouls in this first half as a team. And I mean, that's, that's way too many to have for, as a unit. And that's going to start adding up in the second half of play. Smallwood missed the foul shot, and the Huskies will be kicking themselves at the end of the game if missed foul shots proved to be the difference. Joyce, who's really looked to take the shot in this one, to power. Being watched by Richards. Joyce setting a nice screen. Power to Cave. Rumble. Nice low pass to Joyce, but he missed the layup. I think he thought Sweet Apple was going to come barreling after him, but he had him beaten. Simply missed it. Smallwood misses. Both teams uh, well, are feeling the pressure, Don. I think that's, that's what that is. They've, they've got to start making those shots. I mean, that could decide a game here. When you get the ball underneath the basket like that and you're virtually untouched, it's an easy layup. These guys practice that hours and hours and hours every week. And they should be making these shots. And when they're not making these shots, it's, gonna, it's not going to be a very good outcome for their team. Under a minute and a half to go in the first half. 38-33 the score. Regina leading by five. T.J. Power pushes his way in, misses the shot. And Sweet Apple dribbles it up. The big man. And that's not what you want because Power came from behind, stripped him, and Sweet Apple got a foul there. I guess that's why they tell the big man just to get it off to the guards because they're the ones accustomed to bringing that ball up the court. And you can put that foul under the frustration category. Rumble. He'll fire from outside. Off glass and off the back of the rim and Stephen Piercy there to get the rebound. And that's a few boards that he's been able to corral. 46 seconds to go, 38-33 the score. Sweet Apple, nice pass to Clark, who misses there from about five, gets his own rebound, goes up and is hammered. We'll wait to see who this foul is on. Steve Rumbles takes his second. Seems though everybody in the lineup for the Knights has got a couple in this one as we look down at the score sheet. Clark. First shot is good. Michael Clark with nine points. That's Clark's first free throw of this game in three opportunities. And he hits the second, no doubt about it. And the Knights will play for one. Up 38-35. Getting down to the last 30 seconds. Richards might go for a steal here. He's got very quick hands. Power drives. Little too hard off the glass. He was intimidated by Sweet Apple, no doubt about that. And now it will be the Huskies who will play for one. Final shot here. Jason Trask goes up. No good. And that will end. A very entertaining first half. Well, certainly Herman Collegiate were down by 13 points at one point in this half, and they've rallied back to make it a three-point game at 38-35 for the Regina Knights. But the big problem for Regina is fouls. They have one, two, three, four, five, six players with two or more fouls in this game, and that could prove costly. 
in the later stages of the second half when Ed Buckle might be forced to dip to his bench a little bit more. We see the two teams exiting to take a quick break. And we'll take this opportunity to take a quick break as well. We'll be back with the second half of play right after this break. About a year ago, Michael started complaining of nausea, fatigue, and blurred vision. Fortunately, and back at the Herman Collegiate Gym, getting ready to start the second half of action. Uh, we should notice a slight score adjustment. Uh, we noted it was 38-35 at the end of the first half. The official scorers inadvertently gave one extra foul shot to each team, so subtract those and the score 37-34 for the Regina Knights at the end of the first half. And Rick, I guess the big thing in the first half of play, the Regina Knights with 16 team fouls to the Herman Huskies, uh, 16 fouls, so Regina might be in a little foul trouble towards the end of this contest. Certainly, we saw Bram Russell checking in for the second half now. Uh, Ed Buckle, a good strategy there. Took him out when he had two fouls to make sure that he didn't get three in the first half. And therefore, if he would have done that, then the Huskies obviously would have went right after him. But he has two and isn't in really in big danger as we start the second half. Huskies get the ball right off the tip. Michael Clark tries it and it's good. And it's a one-point game. 12 points for Clark. He leads it. Richards has 11. I guess that extra point might have been for uh, extra effort, maybe. Both teams certainly showing plenty of it in half number one. Bram Russell now. He'll work on Clark. Shot is up, and it's good. Bram Russell with six. Blake Crosley leads the Knights with ten. Frank White has eight. Three-point game, 39-36. Clark. Richards has 11. Clark, 4-3. Good! Michael Clark comes out of the second half. Hits a two and a three, and we're all tied at 39 apiece. Brand new ball game. Graham Russell. No good. Rebound right out, and for the first time in a long time, the Huskies can take the lead. Clark. Cared as though he wanted it. Richards will try. Good for three. And the Huskies getting these long ones to fall. Well, it and looks like the first half break is what the Herman Huskies needed as Michael Clark comes out and he gets five points, including a three-point basket. And Shannon Richards comes right back down and adds another three-point shot. Frank White, a wild shot. Crosley, the big rebound, misses though. Hustles after it. And Blake Crosley may be injured. Blake Crosley down on the floor in some considerable pain, holding his right knee. As that buckle will come out and check on his all-star center. But certainly if Crosley is injured as seriously as this looks, it could be very detrimental to the Regina Knights' cause. Blake Crosley is the leading scorer with 10 points. We all know he had 25 in game number two. Well, Crosley back on the seat. We'll see on the replay here. It looks like Crosley runs into the stage and Maybe jams his knee a little bit there. He jams his foot in the bottom of the stage area. And I guess he twisted his knee or couldn't quite get the full extension on that knee as he's being held from the floor. And you see the sportsmanship there. Michael Clark uh, helping Crosley over to the bench. 42-39 is your score. The Herdman Huskies have worked their way back from a Big deficit to take over the lead. Well, Rick, I think if, uh, if you could find any consolation in an injury, Mark Sweetapple's going to be looking at it right now. I mean, he's going to be able to uh, basically have free reign in the key area if he saw Alexa choose it to take it. 
Blake Crosley kept Sweet Apple in check for the majority of the contest. Now Corey right out now. That's off the back of the rim, and Michael Clark is really having a very big game. Sweet Apple will take it. Gets the roll. And that's eight. And the lead for the Huskies is five. Russell. Right out now will take it the length of the court. Foul is called on Lasega. That's his second. And all of a sudden now it is the Knights who are getting one shot and not getting the rebounds and not getting their shots to go more importantly. Herdman can take a seven point lead. Richards tried a three but it was nowhere near the mark. Here's TJ Power. He's fouled hard and they've really given it to Power when he tries for those layup attempts. He obviously uh, is going to feel it when he goes for those easy ones. That time it was Dean Porter. And Dean Porter with his third foul. The only Herman Husky in real foul trouble in this game is TJ Power will shoot two. Power misses the first. That's quite an atmosphere to be shooting in. If you can see behind the basket, the Herdman fans uh, providing quite the distraction. But he hit the second. 44 to 40. 17.36 to go in the second half. Clark. He's really got it going. 17 points for Michael Clark and many of them from outside. Lasaga. Banks it nicely. Clark and Richards have combined for 31 of the 46 Husky points. Richards with 14, Clark with 17. And I think they've got to move out their defense a little more on Clark because he's not afraid to take the outside shot. There he is again. And he traveled this time. TJ Power. Over to White, being watched by Porter. Frank White misses, fights for the rebound. Out of bounds, off of White, and the Huskies gain control. Right out. Richards to Clark. He'll try again, and he's good again. Michael Clark putting on a one-man show, 19 points. And the thing about those good shooters, Don, they can feel it when they're hot. And Clark has definitely got that feeling. Well, definitely, he came out of on, on, on the second half on fire. He got a, an initial two-point shot, and then he sank a three-point shot, and from there it's been smooth sailing for young Michael Clark. Russell, Bram Russell inside, that's eight for him. Clark, being watched by Russell to ride out. Sweet Apple over Joyce, off the back of the rim. Look at Porter in there among the big men coming away with that rebound. But an over and back violation. And the Knights will get it back. Look on the bench, we don't see any sign of Blake Crosley coming in yet. Power. Richards nearly got away with a steal, but he is called for the foul. 15-41 to go. 48-44 your score. Herdman Huskies in the lead. Really turned things around here. Frank White, nice move. And he gets the shooter's bounce. That's 10 for Frank White. And that's a couple of times, their last times down the floor that they've gone to the middle of the court, moved in and made the basket. Now we see Michael Barrett check in. 
to the contest. He takes Dean Porter out of the game. As Michael Clark will try to continue his hot shooting from the line. Clark is good. I'll tell you, when his shots go in, there's not much doubt about it. Most of them are mess jobs. But not that time. Rebound goes to the Knights. Michael Barrett knocking it away from Russell and out of bounds. The Saga. Sweet Apple went over the top. And they say that it went off of Russell. Richards now. Very smooth ball handler. Corey Rideout. Been held in check. Two points for him. Sweet Apple to Barrett out of bounds. Power. Big possession here for the Knights. They can cut the lead to one. Frank White to Joyce, who will try. Banks it off the backboard, but no good. Sweet Apple the rebound. Rideout delivered it to Richards quickly. To Rideout. Down to Barrett. Barrett tries. Off the back of the rim. Frank White the rebound. Lasega may push it quickly. Tries a three. Short. Richards the rebound. And look at this individual effort. Almost to the whole team, and the crowd gives Shannon Richards quite a round of ovation. You see his skills. Clark. Frank White has moved out on him now to try to take away that outside shot. Richards drives, throws up a wild shot, try to draw a foul. Saga. To TJ Power. Russell. Nice pass to Lasaga, who hits it. Give full marks there to Bram Russell. Turned around, saw the open man. 49-48, 13-35 to go. Barrett again. Air ball. And now it's the Knights who can take the lead. Wild shot by T.J. Power. Sweet Apple fights for the rebound, gets it. Corey right out now. A lot of ebb and flow to this one, changing momentum. Richards to right out. He hits the three. Corey right out. And the Huskies really have that shot into their offensive arsenal, Don. It's uh, something that they look to frequently. Well, certainly, and Coach Ed Buckle calls a timeout on this one. He's got to try to construct a defense now to prevent that three-point shot. The Herman squad didn't get too many three-point shots in the first two games of this series, but already in the second half, they have three successful three-point shots, one coming each from Michael Clark, Shannon Richards, and that last one by Corey Rideout. So certainly the three-point range for the Herman shooter seems to be back for them and is showing on the scoreboard with that team holding a 52-48 lead. This crowd is... Very, very enthusiastic. As we see Richards, he goes right down. That pretty well walks through the entire Regina defense on that last play. But certainly Shannon Richards showing his ball handling abilities there as he worked it down the floor and went through three or four Regina defenders. Smallwood and Piercy back into the game for the Huskies. Frank White to Russell. White to Lasega to Russell. He's going to try to make it happen. Gets the roll. Been a few baskets like that for the Knights. Attempted steal by Power fails. Right out. Looked like he was going to pull up and take it. Clark. Very tough man. He's got some good moves. And Mark Joyce is called for the foul. You see Blake Crosley up. Seems to be limping as he comes in. Not quite sure how rested that knee or ankle may be. But I guess we'll find out. See, see as he just checked into the game there, he's got quite a little red welt on his knee. 
as he favors it with the limp hopping out to the floor. But Coach Ed Buckle needs his size in there. Mark Joyce, the other big center, is in foul trouble with three. So he has to come. Nice pass to Smallwood, swatted away by Crosley. Good defensive effort there. Steal there by Russell. Lasaga pushes it quickly. Russell may take this one. Might have done a little bit too much with that one. Well, it looked and like Richards he was going it out of bounds, Don. It looked like as he was going off his foot, he kind of pushed that ball up there instead of giving it a little, the, the regular shot. He kind of pushed that ahead towards the basket. It went too hard and off the backboard and off the rim. It was like he almost uh, 
tried to palm it, but it ended up slipping out, not going in. 9.30 to go. Frank White, Cave. A big bucket there from Ian Cook, who just checked in in the game. That's his first two points. Mike Barrett was up saying to Michael Clark, that was your man. He was open, and he hit it. Clark, the Saga rushing. Piercy has played well, takes the shot, short rims it, and Crosley's there with the rebound. Frank White. And he's called on the charge. That's four on White. Well, the, la the last two times Frank White has gone to the basket, he's been called on the offensive foul twice. Frank with his fourth foul now in serious foul trouble in this game. Give full credit there to Michael Clark, who sacrificed his body to get the foul call. And there he is again. Michael Clark with 25 points, and he has simply been deadly this game. Nice move, Lasaga. Took it strong to the hoop, cuts the lead to four, 60-56, 8.25 to go. Been a dandy. Clark, just no stopping him this one, Don. 27 points, a one-man show in the second half. Oh, Michael Clark's been all the Herman Huskies need here this afternoon. He's been hitting him from three-point range, been hitting him from the foul line, he's been driving the paint, he's been doing everything for Herman. Lasaga with a beautiful move. Him and Clark answering bucket for bucket here in the last minute and a half. Clark was fouled by Lasaga. I guess that's the only way you can stop him the way he's been going. Try to get a piece of him. Tony Penton comes in for the Knights, taking out Frank White, who is in foul trouble. Corey Rideout is back in. As we'll have a look here at Kevin Lasaga's last drive. Beautiful move there as he goes through the three Herdman defenders. Kind of brings the ball down around his knees and then puts it back up again and gets the drop. Inbound situation. Piercy with it over to Rideout. See Shannon Richards uh, on the bench again, Don, obviously resting him up for the final stretch. Well, Mike Barrett likes to do that a lot. He takes the starters out just for a couple of minutes just to get them to get their second win back and play the, the remainder of this contest. Sweet Apple. Nice pass to Smallwood. Well, the heads-up play there by Mark Sweetapple. He could have drove to the basket and tried to draw the foul, but he saw Mark Smallwood all alone at the right side of the net for the easy rebound, for the easy layup. The Sega a bit out of control there, threw it away. Husky ball, seven minutes to go. We may have a wet spot on the floor that needs to be attended to. If we get a look at that last basket, you see Sweet Apple could have drove to the basket and tried to draw the foul, but instead he had the heads up play and saw Mark Smallwood over underneath the basket all alone, leaving Smallwood for the easy layup and the two points. Well, that's something we were seeing Sweet Apple would have to look for if he's going to be double teamed, and that time uh, he used the open man to perfection, and it resulted in the two points. 6.50 to go. Six point Husky lead. Full credit to them. They're coming back from a very big deficit. Sweet Apple tried it again, but if that pass had been chest high, Don, that might have been another two. Ram Russell. That's 14 for him. 64 to 60. And that's off of Rideout's foot. The Knights go long to Cave. He's fouled and it will count. Stephen Piercy with a foul. Steve Cave with a bucket. And a very smart play there by the Saga to inbound it so quickly and find Cave open. 
And now all of a sudden we're hearing from the Knights supporters. Well, certainly that was a big basket by Steve Cave. Not only did they get the two points by putting the shot up, but he also drew the foul and get an opportunity to make this a three-point play and cut the Regina deficit to one. Six minutes, 29 seconds to go, and the fans here are just on their feet going absolutely wild here. We've got a close, close contest here, and the fans are certainly into this one. Well, we promised you entertainment. There's no doubt about it. We're certainly getting it. Both crowds into it quite heavily. And, well, Don, this is really what it's all about. Oh, most definitely. I mean, since the Herman Huskies have been able to win a couple city championships, their fans have gotten behind them 110%, and they show at every basketball game. They show up no matter if it's at Regina or Herman or the college. They'll show up, and they're ready to cheer their hearts out, as are the Regina fans. Well, this is a big chance for the Knights to move as close as they've been in a while. Steve Cave can reduce the deficit to one point if he makes his foul shot. This crowd getting set for what appears to be a frantic finish. Cave misses the foul shot. Sweet Apple there for the rebound. Richards has it stolen. Cave. Good hustle by Sweet Apple, who got back to take it away. Lasega was open. Sweet Apple to Smallwood. Short. Rebound, Lasega. And they've got Smallwood on the foul. But what a play there by. Mark Sweetapple, the big man, racing all the way back. It appeared to be a two-on-one cave in Lasega, and he stole it and got it to a teammate. Well, certainly, Sweetapple had the good sense to keep that ball in bounds. He was just a couple of steps from going out of bounds with that ball and giving possession back to Regina. But a heads-up play by him, he got it to an open teammate and got to completed the turnover for the, Regi for the Herman Huskies. Crosley with 12. Richards, we're all deadlocked at 64, 5, 12 to go. Richards wanted that one, he'll take it. No good, Cosley the rebound. Tony Penton, Russell is good. Graham Russell with 16 points, and now it's the Knights who enjoy the lead. The seesaw battle continues. 66-64. Well, the big key for both teams right here now is not to try too many stupid shots. Shots from three-point range that they basically have no chance of making. they got to work the ball inside and just try to get those two points and exchange two points back and forth. They've got Crosley on the reach in. If a team tries to make a shot from outside, a, a low percentage shot, that could be the difference in the contest. If they miss that shot and the other team goes down, could widen the gap to four or six points. And there's not a lot of time left in this game. Richard saves it to Clark. Clark may look to bomb away. He's done plenty of it. He has 27. Right out for three. Gets it. Corey right out. That's his second. We had to wait a little bit to see the result of that one, but it did stay in. And the Huskies lead 67-66. Lasaga has been working very very hard Graham Russell and there's Russell give him 18 points and the Knights lead it by one I think sometimes when we watch the game we forget to take into account just how young these men are they're really showing a great deal of poise and 
Ryder will try again. Off the back of the rim, Bram Russell there. He's tough underneath. Cave is open. Lasega off a of foot, goes back to Cave. Slows it down. This crowd standing here. Penton to Lasega. Being watched by Rideout to Crosley, almost knocked away. Lasega off the back of the rim. Sweet Apple the rebound. Richards with it as we get near the three minute mark. Almost over the head of Clark. Wonderful move inside. Michael Clark with 29. He beat Russell that time cleanly. 69 68 your score 250 to go swatted away there by Richards up into the crowd Frank White and Dean Porter just about set to get back into this one Penton comes out and Porter will take out small well, one point in the difference both teams big men we're gonna see on the replay here that last play Looks like the Clark drives to the basket Frank White fell down, right out with a layup. And that's 10 for him. But the big men are gonna play a big factor in the last two minutes and 30 seconds of this game. Crosley and Sweet Apple are gonna get all the rebounds they can and try to box the other out. Off Sweet Apple's foot out of bounds. No clean up that wet spot out there that Frank White appeared to slip on. The Huskies seem to do very well, Don, in games in which Corey Rideout is a bit of a factor. In game one, he had 13, was held in check in game two, and has 10 points so far here today. Well, certainly, Corey Rideout's been a big factor for the Herman Huskies in this second half with two three-point shots. And that's proved to get the Huskies going, the crowd going here, and the Huskies have rallied behind those three-pointers. Bram Russell, he's been red hot. That's 20 for him. 71-70. Sweet Apple, nice give to Porter, and he traveled. And we've seen Porter do that a few times in the series, Don. He tries to put his body into the defender to draw the foul, but that time he took the extra step. He's got to make sure when he goes up like that, he's just got to get the top of his body moving. He can't lift his entire body off the floor. It'll also be called for the travel as we saw in that last play. Lasega tried to really whip a pass into Crosley, but it was intercepted by Richards. Crowd takes a collective sigh to get their breath back after this last few minutes. Richards from almost center court. And there's Porter. We've mentioned his tenacity. I'm not quite so sure they wanted that shot from Richards. That was way out there. Clark. I don't know how he got it in there, but that's 31 points for Michael Clark. He was watched by two men. 120 to go. Three-point lead Huskies. Well, Regina's got to be careful. They can't panic. There's still lots of time left in this game. They don't need a three-point shot to tie. You see a foul here. Foul on Blake Crosley, his third of the game. As he took the initial knew. shot from the outside and then went in for his own rebound and went over the top of a Herdman player. To draw he was, the foul. Uh, sorry to interrupt there, Don. He was running towards the basket as he was taking that shot he just knew he had not hit it and ended up getting the foul well certainly as i was mentioning it although herdman gets the ball here regina can't panic right now it's a minute and 10 seconds left they've got time to drop drive into the basket for a two-point shot and still hope for a turnover and get the ball back and maybe win it with the last shot of the game but certainly there's no time to panic right now no time to take a low percentage shot from outside the, the three-point area as you see, Corey Reddit with a big basket here after hitting two three-point shots in a row here in the second half. He came back with that easy layup on the steal from Frank White. Pick up his 10th point of this contest. And watch the positioning here, how Michael Clark, there's two men there, manages to make the shot. But he had a good sense, too. We saw there he lost the ball in the initial time. He, he had a bounce out of his hands, but he managed to pick it up and still drive to the basket with two men behind him and put it up for the 
Easy layup and the two points to give the Herman Huskies a three-point lead. Mark Sweetapple attempting these foul shots. 70 seconds to go. 73 to 70. Herdman Husky leading the Regina Knights. Big shots here for Mark Sweetapple coming up. It's no good. Rebound to Cave. Well, Mark Sweetapple needed that shot. A four point lead for the Huskies would have been crucial with just 70 seconds to play in the game. Lasaga, he's the man. They like to take the long shots. Cave for three. No good. Russell the rebound and he's fouled. Dean Porter leaned in with the body. And that's Porter's fourth foul. He's the only Herman Husky in foul trouble with four. Michael Clark, Mark Smallwood, and Steve Piercy each have two. 50 seconds to go. Cave yelling instructions to his teammates. Okay, being watched by Richards. Lasaga, will he try it? He will. Yeah. Not a chance. Still night ball, though. It was deflected. The ball was tipped. The Regina Knights, they've got to drive that ball to the basket. They wasted too much time on that last play trying to get a three-point shot, and that time Lasaga never put a good three-point shot up at all. Regina had plenty of time to drive to the basket, score two, and hope for a Herman turnover to come down the court and maybe put another two-point shot in to win the game. But they're wasting too much time here trying to set up a three-point shot. A low percentage shot. If they make it, they tie the game. If they don't make it, Herdman gets possession of the ball and can come down and kill the clock. 34 seconds to go. And as entertaining a game as you want to see. It's been a, been a dandy, no doubt about that. And we and said right from the start that the Herman Huskies have come back and rallied from their big loss on Saturday night at Regina. And they've certainly proven that here today. They got off to a slow start, but they certainly bounced back in this contest. Take a three-point lead with 34 seconds left to play. The timeout called here as both teams try to work some strategy here. Mike Barrett will try to show his Herman Huskies what he hopes to be a winning defense here in this last possession. While Ed Buckle is trying to work out some sort of play for the Regina Knights to possibly tie this game up. As we see, this place is jam-packed with fans, both for the Herman Huskies and the Regina Knights here. The crowd is quite vocal, and I'm sure if the Huskies end up pulling out this victory, you're going to hear something from the crowd after this one's over. I'll let you do all the talking. <laughs> Let's take a quick uh, look at the point totals here. We've got Michael Clark with 31, Shannon Richards with 14. As far as the Knights are concerned, Bram Russell has 20, Blake Crosley with 12. But it's basically been the Russell Clark show for the respective teams in the second half. Michael Clark has been tremendous, and Bram Russell has been answering bucket for bucket. Well, certainly Michael Clark's been unstoppable here for the Herman Huskies. And I would think if Herman gets possession of the ball back and bring it down the floor, they might want to go to Clark. He's been hot all day and maybe get an insurance basket from Clark. We'll see how it goes. They're going to go down to Crosley, and he should go for it. The shot is good. Blake Crosley with 14, and the score is 73-72. And a quick timeout well, called Herdman, by assistant coach Bob Richards. Herdman calls a timeout, 24 seconds left to play in this contest. But as we mentioned, that's what the Regina Knights needed to do, and Ed Buckle's been around basketball long enough to know We'll see the last replay of Blake Crosley's basket, but Ed Buckles got the sense to know you don't need a three-point shot to tie it. Just drive for a two-point shot. Hope for a turnover on the other end of the floor and bring it down. So now it's the timeouts. We saw the last timeout called by Regina. This one called by Herdman for the same reason. They're trying to work out an offense that they hope could win. While the Regina Knights are trying to figure out some sort of defense to stop the Herdman Huskies and cause a turnover. Regina down by one, 24 seconds to play. They need a turnover here. No team is in, in the bonus, so they have fouls to give. And certainly the, the, the crowd a little less vocal here right now. I think the, 
the fans are almost as tense as some of the players here right now. Definitely a nail biter, this contest. Certainly a lot riding on this next 24 seconds. I guess it's time to look for a hero for both teams in this one. Man for man pickup on the inbounds pass. Right up being pressured. They say Lasega not giving enough room. The Tigers got to give him three points off the off the inbound, give him three feet. And we have a foul on Russell. Brown Russell's third foul of the game, so he's fine. He's still got two to give. And now the Herdman Huskies in the bonus situation, they will shoot one on one on that last foul from Brown Russell. Big basket here by Sweet Apple. And you talk about coming through under pressure. Mark Sweet Apple buries that free throw. Herdman up by two points, 23 seconds to play. This is a key basket right here. If Sweet Apple makes it, three points in the difference, and Regina only needs three to tie. If he misses it, Regina can get it and drive down for an easy two point layup tie the game. Second shot is up and it's off the iron and Crosley gets the rebound. The Knights can either go for the tie or go for the win. Well, I think you got to play it safe here. Just go for the tie right now. Take the easy two points. You don't want to take a low percentage shot from the outside. Try to work it inside to maybe a big man like Russell or Crosley. Final ten seconds. Power Five. a lot of time here. And the pass goes out of bounds with four seconds to go. And Herdman calls the timeout here. Four seconds left. They'll get possession of the ball back. That had to be very disappointing to not even get a shot attempt off. They had the time. They didn't really work the ball around. It was sort of left up to T.J. Power to get things done. And uh, he thought a, one of his teammates was down low, made the pass. There was nobody there. And they didn't even get a shot off to try to tie it or win it. Four seconds to go. This crowd basically going insane. They think the Huskies are about to go up two games to one. Four precious ticks remaining. Well, you'll see the Regina Knights here go to the full court, man-to-man -man press. All Herman's going to do is inbound that ball and hold on to it for four seconds. Pass in, and there's a foul with two seconds left. Right it will go to the line. Well, that's the only option. Frank White, that's his fifth foul. He's out of this game, but that's the only option the Regina Knights had there. Herman could have held on to that ball for four seconds, let the clock expire. Regina's going to try to play the foul and hope that Corey Rideout misses the shot. He's shooting a one-on-one -on -one situation in the bonus. Hope he misses the shot. They've got two seconds to bring it down the floor and hit the two-point shot to tie the game. So basically nothing else that Regina Knights could do on that play. Knights call timeout to freeze the shooter. Well, I think they're trying to work out a strategy here. If Rideout misses, the, misses his shot and Regina manages to get the rebound, Ed Buckle wants his guys to know what they've got to do. They've only got two seconds to get the ball down the floor and put it in the basket. So Buckle's trying to work out something here now. Of course, if Rideout makes his shot, pretty well seals it for the Regina, for the Herman Huskies. Well, I think if the Knights are going to get any shot at all at, at this one, it'll be from at least center court. And the odds, of course, uh, not the greatest when it comes to that. Well, certainly it's all desperation now for the Regina Knights. It all borders on this shot by Corey Rideout. There we see one of our officials, Wayne Robertson. And our production crew telling us that he happens to be one of the best softball players Cable Atlantic has in their media slow pitch softball team. Well done, I guess we're having so much fun. We'll come back and do it tomorrow, will we? <laughs> I'll be here. I'll be here bright and early for this one. Game four goes at the Regina Gym. First shot by Ryder is good. That gives him 11. That's the big one. And if he should make this one. Well, it's all over. There's barring an act, can hope for. Barring an act from the big guy, I think this one. 
And there it is, Corey Rideout putting it away. Power with a desperation heave. Can't believe he fouled him there, but I don't think the crowd's gonna let this one finish. And that'll yeah, do we're it. We're just gonna ask it for the contest. This is Cable Atlantic Cable 9, your community channel. And welcome back to the Herman Collegiate Gym. Fans just pouring out of this building. The Herman Huskies winning by a score of 76-72 over the Regina Knights to take a 2-1 lead in this best of five series. And Rick, certainly the Herman squad came out on fire in this game and it came right down to the final seconds. Well, certainly uh, they showed a lot of gumption coming back from an early lead. And I guess uh, having the home crowd behind them uh, paid dividends there. The Huskies getting a big performance from Michael Clark to take this two game to one lead in the best of five series. As for the Knights, uh, I don't really think they have a whole lot of uh, soul searching to do. They played a good game and I'm sure that they'll be there in front of the home crowd uh, tomorrow for game four and it promises to be another dandy and certainly have uh, quite a feat to accomplish if they're gonna top this one. It was a, it was a beaut. And one thing about it, give the Herman Huskies a break. Good evening and welcome to Regina High School site of game four of the best of five Quinnberg Boys High School basketball championship between the Regina Knights and the defending champion Herman Collegiate Huskies. I'm Don Bradshaw along with Rick Lafitte and we'll be bringing you the play-by-play -play for today's game. Rick, the crowd quite vocal for this one and for the Regina High School Knights, their last chance to salvage something here in this series. No doubt about it. Everybody revved up for this when the Huskies taking the 2-1 lead and I guess the big key for the Knights will be trying to contain Michael Clark who attributed uh, more than 30 points in game three and was hot the entire second half. Again, their last chance and if Herman wins it. And welcome back to the Regina High School Gymnasium getting ready to start the fourth game of the best of five Quinnberg Boys High School Basketball Championship Series. The Herman Collegiate Huskies are being introduced now as we speak. The same guards as in the first three games, Shannon Richards and Corey Rideout, the forwards. Dean Porter back out to see action again. He played in game three and game one. He wasn't a starter in the second game of the series. Michael Clark, a big 31 points in game three. And the big man, Mark Sweetapple, who tipped things off for the Herman Huskies here this afternoon. The home court, Regina Knights. They'll counter with the same starting five as in the first three games of this series. TJ Power and Kevin Lasaga will start in the guard position along with Frank White, Graham Russell, and center Blake Crosley. But Rick, certainly for the Regina Knights, this is their last chance. They can't afford to lose here today. If they lose, the Herman Collegiate Huskies uh, capture the city championship again for the second year in a row. Yeah, you can throw all the cliches in the book in there, do or die, backs to the wall. I guess that pretty much uh, applies in this case. I think a key for the Huskies will be trying to get out to a good start in this one because uh, game two here was basically uh, not, a, not a contest that they will remember the other two games at Herdman very competitive very close like we anticipated in the game like game number two is uh, an exception to the rule usually these two teams uh, very competitive and very close well one key matchup to watch here this afternoon is that of Mark Sweetapple and Blake Crosley Crosley has kept Sweetapple in check for most of this series Sweetapple averaging just 8.3 points in the first three games of the series so certainly Crosley's been doing a good job holding out Sweetapple he's going to be effective here this afternoon can't can afford to let Mark Sweetapple get open underneath the basket and get those easy rebounds and those easy points. Yeah, we have been talking about uh, usually with the Huskies heading into the series, you could pretty much bank on Richards and Sweetapple to get their share of buckets, but uh, Michael Clark has really been uh, a tremendous offensive force for the Huskies, averaging 20 points a game and including, as you alluded to earlier, that big 31-point effort in game number three. Well, there we see the roster for the Herman Huskies in this game. Shannon Richards, as you mentioned, a, a key player, as is Michael Clark. Michael Clark with 31 points in the last game. He's the top scorer in this series thus far, averaging 20 points per game. The team is coached by Mike Barrett and assisted by Bob Richards. And the Regina Knights standing pat with their same lineup as the first three games of the series. As we see, coached by Ed Buckle, vice principal here at Regina, and also a former member of the 
high school basketball team. Well, the crowd is obviously primed. Uh, they've been here for at least the past hour and a half, sitting down, waiting for this one to get underway. And Sweet Apple knocks the opening tap out of bounds, and the Knights will get the first crack. Evan Lasaga being watched by right out. Power. Frank White will take the first shot, and it's good. Well, in all three games of this series so far, Frank White's been a key starter for the Regina Knights. He's the one who came out on fire early for that team. He knows he had the first, five, first eight points in the game in game one. And Frank White's always been a contributor right away in the contest for Regina. Sweet Apple over Russell misses the shot. Russell is there to get the rebound, and he'll slow it up and wait for the guards to come back and carry it up. That'll be T.J. Powers' assignment. He's being watched by Shannon Richards. First minute of play here, game number four. Crosley. The shot is good, and they've got Sweet Apple on the hold. You see Crosley over Sweet Apple. Shot is good. The foul called, and Blake Crosley gets his name in the scoring sheet very early on. And the shot is good. Five quick points to start it off for the Knights. Dean Porter wide open down on the baseline and they could swing it around to him. There he is. He'll take that shot and it's good. Porter usually not one who looks for the shot down, but on that occasion he was so wide open. And there's a steal and I believe we have T.J. Power called on the hold as he tried to game possession. Well, as you mentioned, Dean Porter, not one of the big scorers for the Herdman Huskies. Uh, his two points in that last play for Herdman equaled his output in game one and game three of the series. His contributions come in things like he just did with that steal. Inside, Russell called on the chop. Michael Clark to inbound. Right out, almost intercepted by Lasega. Porter down low, pass underneath to Clark. Falls down, ends up giving it away to Power. Power has no one with him though. Down to Lasega, who may try to set up shop. Power, gonna slow it down a little bit. Frank White. Nice move on Porter for the layup. Seems to be a trend on Frank White, usually a ball of fire starting things off. Scores plenty in the early going, but sometimes he seems to be forgotten in that offense at times. Porter, nice move. Misses the shot, but Sweet Apple's there to clean up, and he doesn't miss many from that range. Well, that's the big thing, as we mentioned early in the, the pregame show. Blake Crosby's going to box out on Sweet Apple and make sure he doesn't get those rebounds or else he'll get those easy points. They've got Corey Wright out on the foul. Good work there by Lasega, trying to create an opening. 17.40 to go, 7-4. Gina Knights leading the Herdman Huskies. Russell. Lasega. You see Wright out up high on him because Lasega is a good three-point shooter. Power. Wants Lasega down low. Crosley from the foul line. It's good. Blake Crosley with five. And the night lead is five. Well, Blake Crosley's a player who likes to play in his home gymnasium. He's a high-spirited player, and you can tell that uh, throughout the game. Crosley in game two, the last game played at Regina High School, had 25 points as right out range a shot. But certainly Blake Crosley loves the home fans, he loves entertaining them, and he's off to a fine start here again today. Corey right out knocking one down from the outside to reduce the deficit to three. Russell knocked away by Sweet Apple, who moved over nicely to help out Clark. Mark Sweet Apple always a force on defense. Russell, he'll try it again. And Clark gets the rebound. Richards. Defense, 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 
quarter, as you can see, operating down low. No one really on him. Almost defying him to shoot if he should get the ball. There he is again. He'll try again. And that time it was an air ball in the crowd. Let's him know about it, but again, Don, look at the hustle by Porter. He missed the shot, goes in, gets the jump. And the ball will go back to the Huskies. Well, Herman got the ball back on the position. And the next time a jump ball situation occurs, Regina will get the ball. As Kevin Lasaga gets called on the foul there, his first of the game, Regina's third team foul. Richards, he's yet to fire. Usually has a lot of ammunition he brings to the court. He's not afraid to put up the shot. Michael Clark, off the back of the rim. Sweet Apple over Russell. Gains control, fighting for it. And we have another foul call, and this time, It's on T.J. Power, and that's his second on. Well, T.J. Power, not one of the players Regina usually has been in foul trouble, but he's got two with less than four minutes gone in this game. Ed Buckle might soon think about putting in Steve Cave for T.J. just to keep his starting guard out of foul trouble. Richards tried a three, missed it. Russell got the rebound. Not before Sweet Apple got his hands on it, though. He's been a presence from the rebounding perspective early. Osley underneath, seven points and a lovely pass there. Porter thought about it, decided not to go with it. Richards swings the pass underneath the Sweet Apple, who goes up and gets the basket, and he's fouled by Crosley. Well, certainly a big play there by Mark Sweetapple. Not only did he get the ba bucket to count the two points, but he also gets the additional shot from the line on the foul. Try to make this a three-point play. Sweetapple. Nice touch from the foul line. Three-point play. Scores 11-9. Power takes it up court. Alters his shot over Sweetapple. And the foul is called on Sweet Apple. And that's too early for the big center of the Huskies. Nice move by Lasaga. Got his defender up in the air. Nice pass to Crosley, who takes care of it. That's nine for Blake. And Lasaga really has a knack of finding that open man done. Well, certainly Blake Crosley's size doesn't hurt at all. I mean, if uh, Crosley was probably a foot shorter, it would be a little tougher to pick him out in the crowd. But as he looms over the opposition, it's not tough for Russell to pick him out or Lasagua or any of the players under the junior squad. There's Michael Clark making his presence felt. His first two points. Almost safe to say they won't be his last. Hour. 14.25 go here in half number one. Frank White, stolen by Porter, who just stripped him of the ball. Richards will take it the length of the court and lay it in. <laughs> Tied at 13. Lasaga to Russell. Ram Russell. He loves operating from that position. Well, certainly there's no doubt about it. Bram Russell isn't just a big player who can rebound. He can also shoot that ball from anywhere in the paint, as he's proven. See Porter again, wide open underneath. Tried to pass in front to Sweet Apple, and it was knocked out by Crosley, so the Huskies will regain possession here. Well, the Knights are using the 1-3-1 defense here. They have one player up front, and they have Bram Russell working the baseline. Russell floats back and forth depending on what side of the court the ball is on. That's why you'll see a guy like Porter be left open, because the ball is on the opposite end of the court. When the ball comes over to the other side, as you see right now, Russell comes over and makes the coverage. Nice pass by Porter. Mark Sweetapple has seven. And the game is once again deadlocked. Up 
Crosley outside. Wasn't looking to take the shot. Lasaga. Pass is knocked away by Clark, who came over there nicely. He'll slow it down. Tried to hit Bram Russell there with the pass, but Clark was equal to the task defensively. Porter inside. Had to alter his shot because Russell was there. Pass now to center court. T.J. Power. Into no man's land, and Shannon Richards with the steal. Richards takes it coast to coast. Travel in Lasega. Stuck a hand in there and made sure Richards wasn't going to get an easy layup that time. Good defensive work. Lasega. That's one of the few times they've stopped Richards once he's got a good head of steam. Crosley misses. Frank White misses. A relatively easy shot. There's Richards again. And this time it's good. And the Huskies take the lead at 17-15. 12-20 to go. Well, Herman with a two-point lead. It's time for the Regina Knights to call a timeout here. Just a little. Well, Graham Russell from that spot. A little bit further outside this time, but it's still four points for Bram. Right out, takes it inside, banks it out the backboard, no good. Cosley underneath gets the rebound. Russell will take it individually. Shot as an air ball. And the Knights will regain possession as it went out the Husky defender. And as we mentioned, the Regina Knights do elect to take a timeout in this one. Just to settle down a little bit. I think they, they had hoped to jump up to a <clears throat> Excuse me, a big lead as they did in the first uh, game here at Regina High School, game two of the series. But the Herman Huskies have played tough throughout this one. They didn't come out flat. And the score currently tied 17 apiece with 11.47 to play in the first half. Seemed to be a, a better flow so far in this one, Don. There were a lot of fouls uh, called in the previous encounter in game number three. But to this point, uh, good flow of action as we take a look at some of the signs. And again, we've noticed the creativity throughout this series. As we see the last replay here, Meadop gets the ball and tries to find a man wide open as Michael Clark gets his first two points of the game. As you mentioned, Clark with a 31 point game. Tops for the series for either club. That came in game three on Tuesday at Herman Collegiate. And certainly the Knights are hoping to get more of an offensive output from Clark here again in this contest. Well, the Huskies have their starting five out there, and the Knights have put out Mark Joyce on the floor. Mark Joyce goes out and replaces Frank White. And a foul on Dean Porter. And we've noticed throughout this series that Porter is not about to give up any easy buckets will make the man pay before he gets those precious two points. Oh, definitely. As he uh, checks out now, Mark Smallwood enters the game, but uh, Gene Porter is a defensive player. Coach Mike Barrett knows that, and that's why he has him on the floor. Mark Joyce hits the first shot, so he makes his presence felt upon checking into game number four. And the second shot is off the back of the iron, and the Huskies will move quickly. Shannon Richards off the back of the rim. P.J. Power now brings it up. Lasaga. Nice pass inside to Bram Russell. Well, that's the play Regina's got to use a little more. They've got to find, they've got two big men underneath there, Blake Crosley and Bram Russell. They've got to start getting their guards to find those big men underneath the basket, which they did on that last play. Crosley and Russell have 15 of the team's 20 points. Michael Clark for three. And he was nailed by Joyce after the follow through. And Ed Buckle now shouting instructions to his team. He wants Bram Russell and Mark Joyce to switch sides. Sweet Apple over Crosley, good. That's nine for Sweet Apple. Now that inbounds pass there, the reason why there are no foul shots is because the foul occurred after 
Clark had attempted his three-pointer. A lot of bodies in the key area. Crosley gets it and hits. And Blake Crosley has 11 points. And there it is again, the same play we just talked about. It's nice, we've got to get those, that ball into the key area and underneath the basket to Blake Crosley and Graham Russell. They've done that the last two times up to four and it's resulted in four points. Clark, Russell got him on the way up. So Graham Russell, that's his second foul. Now we saw last game when Russell had two, Ed Buckle elected to sit him down for the remainder of the half. It'll be interesting to see if that's what he elects to do this time. Clark now. First shot is no good. And the second is good. 22-20 your score. 10-25 to go in the first half. Regina Knights leading the Herdman Huskies. Huskies lead this best of five series. Two games to one. We hope you're enjoying all the action on Cable Atlantic. Russell. He'll take him. Shot's no good. Russell gets his own rebound. Air ball, and finally Corey Rideout comes out of the pack with it. Just hitting the halfway point of the half. Huskies have to be pleased that they were certainly well within this one. Wasn't the case in game one when they fell behind early. Michael Clark with another bucket. And that's five for him. And we're all deadlocked. As the fans send up the cry of import as Clark gets that last basket. We've talked about that before. Clark transferred in from Fort Bass over the Christmas break to attend Herdman Collegiate. T.J. Power just hit a three. But we know that in the last game on Tuesday in game three, T.J. Power tried two shots in three-point range, and he came nowhere near the basket. We said at the time he had the, the range to hit the three-point shots, and it was strange that he wasn't coming close to the basket, and that time he proved that he does indeed have the range to hit three points. Crosley knocked the ball away. Lasega gained control, and he'll try. Nifty move, and it just came out. But Lasega, wonderful penetration there, but did not get the two points. And they get Shannon Richards on the call, and full credit to Lasega. Missed the shot, hustled back on defense, managed to get set up. And Shannon Richards is called for the offensive foul. Well, Kevin Lasega, that time he came back, and he just basically put a halt to his movement just in front of Shannon Richards. His feet were planted firmly on the floor, so referee decided that he had his ground staked, and Shannon Rich Richards got called with the charge. The Sagal will try it again, and again he's no good with it. Hustles there, but the shooting touch not quite there yet for the Saga, although that can change in a hurry. Michael Clark, long rebound goes to Joyce. Power to Russell, he may take it. Oh, he seemed to be caught in an indecision there, Don, whether he was going to dunk the ball or lay it in. And Bram Russell missed a good opportunity to put his club ahead by five points. There was an air of anticipation there from the crowd. And Clark comes right back down and makes him pay. And that's seven for Clark, and he's continuing to roll. 25-24 the score. Power. Takes it in among the big men, misses the shot. Good rebound by Mark Joyce. And a travel is called on Clark. Frank White checking back into the game for Mark Joyce. Joyce leaves with just one point. On a single free throw made. Herdman contingent, not too happy with that last call. Power now. Frank White. Shot is up. No good. Crosley, the rebound. And that's 13 for Blake. And again, uh, good positioning underneath the boards. Crosley, Johnny on the spot to get the rebound from the shot that went astray. Dean Porter. And that's good. 
Porter with four. Well, Gene Porter with his highest point total of the series thus far. He had two points in game one and game three, and three points in game two. Four points here this afternoon. Crosley to Power. Power, nice pass to Crosley, who misses. Johnny may have re-injured that ankle. Right out. Gets the roll, and the Huskies have taken the lead. Four points to Corey right out, 28-27. Russell, no good. And well, Bram Russell that time a little surprising. He pulled up, he had the free lane to the basket, and he pulled up and tried a shot from mid-key area. Michael Clark picked up by Richards. Lovely pass to Sweet Apple. The basket counts, and he was fouled. That's three on Russell, and that could be a big point in this game. What's this fake by Richards? That was just a super play by Shannon Richards. He looks like he's going to drive to the side to the basket, and at the last minute, he dishes off to Mark Sweetapple all along the side of the basket. Just a super heads-up play by young Shannon Richards. That's Graham Russell.
Bottom of the mesh. Six points to Corey Rideout. Saga. Blocked by Sweet Apple. And the Huskies can go up by six. Rideout again. Missed that time. Joyce the rebound. Again, the pace getting a bit frantic. Lasaga opts to slow it down for the time being. Power. Sweet Apple, as you can see, fronting Crosley, hoping for help from the backside. Lasaga lost it underneath. Still battling for it. Porter goes down. And Regino ma maintained possession on this. As Temper starts to get a little testy here in this one. Dean Porter a little upset there. Both Herdman coaches up and getting their players over to the sideline. They don't want to see anything more come of it. Well, certainly this has been a physical series, an intense series, but you don't want to see Temper starting to get a little out of control here. And coaches for both teams realize this and realize that their players might start to get a little a little hot under the collar, but they're quick to get in there and settle their players down. Blake Crosley to TJ Power. Power back into Crosley. He may try from here. Misses. Came up short with it. Good hustle to get his own rebound and missed again. Blake Crosley frustrated, getting two excellent opportunities inside. And the Huskies back down the court. But Crosley with a steal. Redeeming himself on the defensive end of things. Mark Joyce moves into the key. Threw up a wild shot. Coach Ed Buckle not pleased with that effort. Three minutes to go. And the Huskies enjoy a four-point lead. Richards almost faked out Sweet Apple there. He wasn't expecting the pass. Clark looked like he got away with steps. The Sega. End to end. And he makes the shot. The Saga with five, and the lead is two. 34-32, Huskies lead. Two and a half minutes to go in the first half. Another tight ball game, as one would expect. Richards is short. Crosley the rebound. Leaves it for the Saga. Long pass to Joyce. To Power. Power inside, and that's not the place for him to be putting up a shot when you've got two or three much taller players underneath. And it was hacked away and the Huskies gained control. Garrett. Crosley slots it away from behind. Pass to Frank White. Goes for the layup and he is fouled. Frank White with the two-pointer and he will try to complete the three-point play. With the sweet two with the fouls on. And it's on Corey Rideout. That's a big play here. We see Frank White coming down to complete the fast break. He sinks the two points and gets fouled by Corey Rideout. He'll try to make this a three-point play. The game currently tied 34 apiece, 159 to play in the first half. Big basket coming up here for Frank White, a big shot. We talk about White, he seems to go in cycles. He gets four points here, four points there. But he's a, a player that sometimes... Uh, don't go to all the time on offense. Well, certainly Frank White averaging 11.3 points per game in the first three games of this series. But as you mentioned, he gets off to a quick start. As we know, in game one of the series, he scored the first eight points for the Regina Knights. But basically, in the second half, he just wasn't there. Frank White's a player who's got to contribute a little more in both halves of this contest for the Regina Knights to meet with any success. Well, the only player to this point in real serious foul trouble is Bram Russell. He has three. T.J. Power has two. Over on the Husky side, Corey Rideout and Mark Sweetapple have two apiece. Frank White will go to the line here, trying to complete a three-point play, and this free throw could give the Knights the lead. We're all deadlocked at 34. Shot is no good, and the rebound goes to Clark. Shannon Richards being watched by Lasega. Crosley tried to knock it away from Sweet Apple. Barrett from outside. Shot is no good. Crosley the rebound. Play Crosley having a big game on the boards. Power to Joyce. Joyce can't get the roll.
Under a minute and a half. Right out. Barrett. Barrett again. Shot's good. A three-pointer. From Michael Barrett. Well, a big basket by Michael Barrett late in the first half. Three-point shot. We saw he made a big three-point shot in game one of the series to seal the Herdman victory. T.J. Power missed. Smart choice the rebound. Back to Power, but he has it stolen by Rideout. 45 seconds to go. Richards, will he look to push it? Slow it down. Rideout. Moved his way into the key, missed a shot. Crosley trying to get another rebound. He's pushed to the floor. And possession of Blake Crosley and Mike Barrett now. And I guess this sort of thing bound to happen, Don. Four games of going out of tooth and nail. Oh, definitely. And you're bound to see that a lot of times when two players are battling for the ball. I mean, even after the whistle goes, the two players still want to kind of prove something to the other. So they keep trying to pull for that ball. Temper starts to get a little heated. Sega called on the foul, trying to impede Richards. That's two for Lasaga. 26 seconds to go. And Shannon Richards will go to the line. Herman in a bonus situation. Richards will shoot one and one. Shannon Richards with six points. Misses the free throw. Crosley and Sweet Apple fought for the rebound and the ball went off Sweet Apple. The Knights here with 20 seconds to go. You would think that they would play for the last shot, although we've seen a couple of instances in the series where that has not been the case from both teams putting up the shot quickly. Well, Lasag is keeping the pace slow. He is playing for the last shot here. And he gets to hit it. Three seconds left in the half. Richards. Oh, a wonderful effort. Almost two-thirds of the court there. Off the rim, and that'll do it for a... They, you know, they're going to relax. They're only down by one point. Still a full half to play. They can't come out and start to panic and try firing shots from impossible angles. Hopefully they drop. Yeah, th I think both teams have to be pretty pleased with uh, their play in that first half. Uh, both clubs uh, well distributed on the scoring front. As you mentioned, Sweet Apple with 11. Michael Clark is 7. Corey Wright out 6. Shannon Richards 6. And over on the Regina side, it's Blake Crosley with 13, Lasaga with 7, Bram Russell, and Frank White with 6. And I guess we should point out that the only uh, real player in any foul difficulties was Bram Russell, who currently has 3. And that could be a big factor heading into this final 20 minutes. Well, definitely, Bram Russell's going to be careful. He doesn't get fouled out of this game. So with that, he's not going to play as aggressive as he normally would because he's just going to be careful he doesn't get those last two fouls and get ejected from the contest. But you'll notice he's back out there to start the second half for the Regina Knights. The player certainly the nice need here in the second half. And we know this is the starting lineup from the start of the contest. They're back here to start the final 20 minutes of the game. And Russell gets the tip, and the Knights can try and gain the lead with their first possession. TJ Power drives in, misses the shot. Crosley gets the rebound. Frank White takes it strong to the hoop, misses the layup, and now. Here come the Huskies with Corey Rideout, and he'll slow it down after corralling that long pass from Dean Porter. Shannon Richards might recall in the second half of the last game, the Huskies came out three-point bombing, and they got them to fall, and it was a big confidence builder for them in that big win. Michael Clark, that's stopped. Blake Crosley there doing the job. Frank White contributing. Russell, no good. So the Knights come out a little bit cold. Richard, always a threat. Pass inside for Sweet Apple goes astray, and the Knights will take over. 19 8 to go. Second half, can't get much closer than this. Herbman 37, Regina 36. TJ Power brings the ball down the court for the Knights. Frank White, the second inside, misses. And appear to have 
Got a chopping foul. We'll wait and see the referee's call. And it is on Blake Crosley. That's his second. Shannon Richards. Sweet Apple moving around, trying to free up Clark, who has been held in check. Richards, nice reverse layup, but it doesn't go. There's Porter again. Tried to bank it off Russell's leg out of bounds, and Porter moves up and tries to steal from Power. There's a whirling dervish on the court, Dean Porter. White tried the shot, and we have a blocking foul. That's called on Sweet Apple. And for Mark Sweet Apple, that's three. Well, Frank White will go to the line now. Six points in this game. He's missed his only foul shot thus far. That's coming in the first half. Shot is in and out. And White will try the second shot to get things even at 37. See the Herdman supporters behind the bucket. But White is smooth there, and that's his seventh point. And we are all knotted up. Richard shouting out a play. Trying to get some movement here. Porter inside, Sweet Apple. And they've got Crosley in a hold. And that's his third, and that's two quick fouls for Crosley in the first minute and 48 seconds of this second half. Richards. Right out over to Richards. Pass inside, stolen by Russell, who moved over nicely to help out Crosley. Lasega. TJ Power. Crosley, a little too far for the bucket for him. Cross court pass to Frank White. Down low to Power. Lasega. Good defense by Rideout. Kevin will try from deep outside, and Sweet Apple gets the rebound. That may have got a bit of rim if it was lucky. Both teams uh, not looking too fluid on offense, although there's Shannon Richards, and he's fouled by Lasega, and that's his third. So all of a sudden, we have Russell, Lasega, and Crosley with three fouls with 17.20 to go. As you take a look at the replay. Well, certainly the Regina's got to be careful here now. They, they've got the three big starters, Russell, Lasega, and Crosley, all in foul trouble. That's we're going to see Lasega check out of the game. Steve Cave making his first appearance. But Regina can't afford to get in any foul trouble here in this contest. Tie game at 37. Shannon Richards right on the money with that first free throw to give the Huskies the lead again. And he is equally as fluent with the second one. And he can chalk up a 39-37 lead for the Huskies. 17-15 to go. Steve Cave taking over the ball handling responsibilities from Lasaga. T.J. Power. Bram Russell being watched very closely by Michael Clark. Power. Crosley. He'll go from there. And the shot is good. 15 points for Blake Crosley. You may see them go to Crosley a bit more as Sweet Apple has three fouls. Deadlock at 39. Shannon Richards, nowhere to go. Stephen Piercy into the game now. Porter, thought about it. He'll try it, and he gets the layup. Six points for Dean Porter. He went inside Crosley and Russell to get that basket. Huskies by two. Power for three. It rims out, and Stephen Piercy there to get the rebound. Shannon Richards 
Lasaga up again, ready to come back after a brief respite. Shot is no good. Bram Russell the rebound. Calls for a guard to come up to gain control. P.J. Power will do that. Down in the corner is Steve Kay being watched by Steve Piercy. Ball goes off the Kay's foot. And the Huskies will gain possession. 15.45 and the clock running. Two-point Herdman lead, 41-39. Clark. Call on Frank White. Frank White just his first foul of this contest. But Regina has four fouls as a team here with less than five minutes gone in the second half. They don't want to get into a bonus situation. That could be the decisive factor in this contest. Three throws late in the game. The Herdman up by just two points now. Good trap on Richards in the corner. Frank White misses the shot. Didn't really have any teammates underneath the boards there. White took it anyway. Sweet Apple. Nice pass to Dean Porter, and he's hurting them. That's eight. Porter, not one you would expect to be a big offensive threat, but he is one basket away from reaching double digits. Well, I'm sure when Regina were preparing for this contest and thinking about who they'd have to stop, Dean Porter wasn't the name that was at the top of the list. Russell underneath. Nice basket there. He had to do a bit of adjusting as he found himself directly underneath. Turned his body towards the rim and made the tough shot. And it's 43-41 for Herdman. 14.25 to go. More substitutions on the way in this one. Michael Clark. Saga drives, lays it in. Nine points for the Saga. Well, just before the Saga made that shot, I heard Coach Ed Buckley yell out, you gotta be willing to go through. And that time Kevin Lasaga certainly was willing as he drove the paint to the easy layup on a nifty basket. Richards drives nicely. That's 10 for him. 45-43 the score. The Saga. May look to take things into his hands a little bit more from an offensive point of view. Bram Russell is stuffed by Sweet Apple. And here's Dean Porter slowing it down over to Piercy. To Richards, good man to leave it for. Frank White is called on the hold. That's his second. But more importantly, the 15 foul for Regina is just one for Herdman. As I was mentioning, Regina has got to be careful. They don't want to get into a bonus situation with a lot of time left on the clock in the second half. Certainly, if, you, if you're going to lose a game, you don't want to lose them from the foul line. Mark Smallwood is into the game now for the Huskies, and Jason Trask has checked in for the Knights. Trask, number 12. Smallwood just had the ball. He's number four for Herdman. Piercy, being watched closely by Power, gets it to Sweet Apple, makes a nice move, and hits the shot. Nice touch, 13 for Mark Sweet Apple, and the Huskies have now taken a four-point advantage. Russell left open. Good. Graham Russell, the thing that makes him so good is that he also has a nice touch from outside, Don, not only from 10 feet, but sometimes he can knock him down from 15 or 20. Well, we've mentioned that in previous broadcasts. Not only is he in there for his height and his rebounding, uh, rebounding ability, but the Herman squad have always got to be on him because he can shoot that ball from three-point range. He can shoot it from anywhere inside the key area. He's just an all-around talented basketball player. Good hustle by Crosley there after knocking it away, but failed to keep it from going out of bounds, so the Huskies regain possession. There's Corey Ryder being watched by Lasaga. Piercy loses it to Lasaga. Lasaga will drive and lay it in. So Kevin Lasaga now has 11 points, and we are all tied at 47 with 12.27 to go. Corey Ryder. That went off Trask, and the Huskies will 
keep control. Tried the pass there to Sweet Apple, was a little high, but it was knocked out by the Knight defender. That was the last minute. There's a giveaway. Right out. CJ Power misses and then throws it away. Tried to get it to Lasega, but wasn't looking where he was throwing it. And that tends to lead to turnovers such as that. Corey right out. Foul on Lasega. And that is his fourth. Well, this could be a big problem for the Knights. Kevin Lasega with his fourth foul. If he happens to foul out of this contest, it's going to be tough for the Knights in the later stages of the game if they need a shooter from outside and a good ball carrier. Smallwood tries from baseline. Shot is no good. And Trask finally corrals. Steve Cave getting ready to check back in. I would imagine that would be for Lasega. Too much time left to see him foul out. Steven Piercy working hard. TJ Power. Out the basket. And we'll wait and see. May have been Corey Rideout. And that's Corey who it Rideout is. Indeed. Commits his third foul of this contest. And TJ Power will get an extra shot from the line here for the Knights. Michael Clark will check back in. Seemed as though Power waited and waited and finally decided he would go up with it. And it paid dividends for his squad as they have recaptured the lead at 49-47. Mike Barrett is getting ready to check in for the Huskies as Power gets ready to deliver this free throw. And it is... No good, but there is a lane violation there. Power will get the shot again. So with this bigger court, it's kind of hard to hear all the calls, Don, but Power does come through. And the Knights have one of their bigger leads in the past 15 minutes. They lead by three. Corey right out. Big possession for the Huskies. Sweet Apple. They've got him where they want him. He'll move low now. Cave on right out. Piercy being watched by Power. Michael Clark. Good. So Michael Clark checks back into the game. And that's nine for him. Tough to stop him in there. Well, Has good height. Hey, nice pass to Blake Crosley. 17 for Crosley, and give the full credit there. Finances for Steve Cave. Well, certainly with the side out of this contest, if you don't need to have a smart ball carrier out there in the guard position, TJ Power is one, but Steve Cave checks in. He's the other, and that time he demonstrated he's got a heads up play as he found Blake Crosley all alone in the basket. Sweet Apple trading bucket for bucket. That's 15 for him. This game hovering all the time, it seems, around a three or five point deficit, and right now it's one. 52-51, Regina lead. TJ Power takes it all the way, misses the shot. Crosley the rebound. He'll go up again, and he's nailed by Dean Porter. You think about Porter, I don't know how many times he's said it, but he makes you pay the price. And Crosley will go to the line to shoot two as he was in the act of shooting. And Powell, P Porter drew the foul. No doubt about it. Crosley got nailed. So we see T.J. Power went with the initial shot, and then Blake Crosley missed one, and then Porter with that tremendous slap to get the ball away from Crosley. And he ended up catching a piece of Crosley on that one. Take the foul. Crosley has 17 points. 52-51 ball game. Knights lead, and... We have arrived at the second half of half number two. 9.46 to go. We played 10-14. And like games one and three done, another very tense and very entertaining affair. Game two has really been the only blowout we've seen. 
You see Ian Cook checks into the game for Jason Trask. Crosley hits the first. That's 18 points for him now. He had 25 here in game two. And that's 19 for Blake Crosley. Lead is three. The Huskies have been good at continuing to score when they fall behind by three. They never let that lead of the Knights get any larger than that. Shannon Richards. Well, that's the big thing for her when they've got to hang close here. Bat it away. They can't afford to let the Regina Knights take too much of a lead here at their home gymnasium. Over and back call on Sweet Apple, who appeared to take a shot up in the eye area. He's a little bit dazed, and we have a stoppage to accommodate him. The fans here once again voicing their dis dis disapproval at that last call. But it was clearly a backcourt violation. So the Knights can look to go up by five points here, and this would be their biggest lead in quite a while if they can get the two points. Good move by TJ Power to bring it back out there. Crosley, they'll try Sweet Apple. Shot's no good. May have been another foul on Crosley, though. And that is four. Well, certainly Regina are in dire straits here now. With both Kevin Lasaga and Blake Crosley, four fouls apiece. As Herbman just calls a timeout here to settle the team down. Trailing by three points with 9.09 left to play in the contest. But the Knights have got to be careful here, as we mentioned. Lasaga and Crosley with four fouls each, and their other big man, Bram Russell, has three fouls. As we see that last basket. As we see Kevin Lasaga there earlier in the contest, he made the big steal and drove to the hoop. That's something the Knights have got to do a little more. Notice the last couple of times up the floor that TJ Power has been taking the ball. He's been driving to the basket, but he's been having no luck against the, the big men for the Herman squad. I think TJ's got to just sacrifice his body for the team. He, he looks a little tentative going in there against uh, all those bodies, and his shots haven't been successful. He's got to learn that he's got to take a couple of knocks and he's going to drive to the basket. Barrett. Underneath, call on Ian Cook. And now Herdman are in a bonus situation. As we mentioned, this is could be a deciding factor in the contest. There's just under nine minutes left to play in the game. And Herdman will be shooting in a bonus situation for the remainder of this game. Currently trailing by three points, but that could be taken care of. Sweet Apple hits the first. That's 16 for him. Frank White is up, getting ready to check in. Sweet Apple will attempt this second shot here to try to reduce the deficit to one with 8.58 to go. Second shot is up, and it's smooth. And that's 17 for Mark Sweet Apple. Been one of his better games. One point game, 54-53, 8.50 to go. We're going to get Michael Clark there on the hold. He has absolutely no troubles at all. Just his first foul of this contest. Inbounds. White. Power. Into Russell. Might work Sweet Apple. Shots up. Ram Russell. 12 shots, and that was a tough one. Sweet Apple was there for the challenge. Jumps straight up with him, but Russell connected. Shannon Richards drives the lane. In and out. Rebound, Frank White. Power. Slows it down. Cave on Piercy. Loses it to Piercy. Big defensive play there. Piercy much in the mold of a Dean Porter. Tenacious. Sweet Apple, tough position, misses the shot. Rebound goes to Power. Power's got to watch it here. You see Piercy always very steel-minded, as is Shannon Richards. 
7.55 to go. Knights by three. They have not been able to get that lead any higher than that. Huskies have hung tight. Power. Hits the three-pointer. And the crowd erupts. Well, a big basket there by T.J. Power. A three-point shot to give the Regina Knights a six-point lead with 7.38 remaining in this contest. Certainly the Regina Knights can rally around that big shot. Barrett comes right back with a three. That's two three-pointers for Michael Barrett. Scores 59-56. Russell. White. Back to Russell. Short rims it. Rebound Richards. And he may look to take it. He's got that look. But he's double teamed and loses it. Power no good. Pace really picking up here in the last few minutes. 59-56 your score. Regina Knights leading the Herdman Huskies. Game four of the High School Boys Basketball Championship. Frank White has called on the push. That'll be his third. But if the Herdman Huskies needed anything, it was that three-point shot by Michael Barrett. After T.J. Power put the Knights up by six points with his three-pointer, Barrett came down and silenced the crowd with a three-point shot of his own to pull Herdman within three once again. Barrett has uh, contributed with some outside bombs in this series. Of course, everyone recalls the biggie in game one. Michael Clark takes advantage of the freebie. That's 10 points for him. 59-57. Prosling Lasega up off the bench. Clark drains the second. And the Huskies have done well to reduce what was a six-point deficit down to one. They didn't let that three-pointer from T.J. Power phase them whatsoever. Frank White. Nice assist from T.J. Power. That's nine points for Frank White. And the Knights lead it by three, 61-58. Shannon Richards. Wild move there. Got himself spun around, and the ball went out of bounds. I think that time Shannon was just looking to draw a foul there as he went in virtually against three Regina defenders. He hoped that if he at least drove to the basket, he'd pick up a foul. Mark Joyce comes out. Substitutions on the Husky side. Smallwood goes out. We've got Porter, Sweet Apple, Richards, Rideout, and Clark against Crosley, White, Russell, Lasaga, and Powers. So we have both starting clubs in there for this final 6-20. Clark came from behind to knock it away from Russell. A huge defensive play. Think about the Huskies, they're down by three, but that's just a shot away for some of their marksmen, such as a Rideout or a Richards and a Clark. Sweet Apple, good move inside, 19 for Mark. Crosley couldn't afford to get that fifth foul. Sweet Apple knows he's in trouble and went right after him. The Saga. Crosley does well to gain possession. Shot is no good. Crosley almost. Went over Sweet Apple's back. Ed Buckle up. He wants a time as soon as he can get it. Huskies look to regain the lead. Michael Clark. Right out. Pass goes out of bounds. Tried to hit Sweet Apple. And Ed Buckle gets that timeout that he had wanted. Well, it's time for the Regina Knights to create some sort of possible situation here for the remainder, remaining five minutes and eight seconds. Ed Barker in a tight situation. He has Blake Crosley and Kevin Lasaga with four fouls. Bram Russell and Frank White with three fouls each. So certainly the starting crew for the Regina squad, with the exception of TJ Power, are all in foul trouble. And Ed Buckle's going to just tell his team right now as we see a couple of big three-point plays here on replay. But Ed Buckle's going to tell his team now, be aggressive, but don't take any fouls. A foul to Crosley the second. They're gone from this game, and Buckle needs both of those players here. This game's so close. He needs the rebounding ability in the inside game of Blake Crosley and the ball carrying in the outside shot of Kevin Lasaga. That last replay that we saw was a very big three-point shot there by Michael Barrett. The Huskies had just fallen behind by six after T.J. Power had made his three. And uh, it was a big shot because the Huskies had not scored on that time down the court, and the Knights had 
push the lead up to eight. Things uh, might not be quite as tense as they are now. One point lead, 5.08 to go, 61-60. And the Knights will push the ball up the court and they won't feel any pressure. T.J. Power. The middle appears to be open. Crosley to Lasega for three. Shot is no good. Shannon Richards now. It's the Huskies will try to set up to take the lead. Sweet Apple on Russell. Sweet Apple takes him and hits. Mark Sweet Apple with 21 points. That's a game high. Crosley has 19 for the Knights. And that bucket gives Herdman a 62-61 advantage with four and a half minutes to go. Graham Russell. Lasega. Rideout was close to blocking it, but they did get him for the foul. And for Corey Rideout, that's his fourth. We'll see that last replay as Lasaga drives the paint, but Rideout manages to come in. Tried to get all ball, but he managed to get a piece of Lasaga to draw the foul. And Lasaga hits that free throw. And hits the second. And now it is the Knights who have regained control of the lead. 63-62. Richards brings the ball up court. He'll take power all the way and a layup for Shannon Richards, and that's 12 for him. Fine individual effort. Lasaga. Got caught inside, and Smallwood gets the rebound. Sega went in there dangerously. He has four. Richards now. Proud. Sweet Apple's been tough. 23 for him. Well, we're seeing the fouls come into play here right now. Blake Crosley a little tentative on blocking Mark Sweet Apple. He can't afford to take that fifth foul. And we saw the last two times up the floor for Herb and Sweet Apple was just down to the basket virtually untouched. Corey right out. Not a whole lot of movement on the offense. Power will try. And that's off the rim and the Huskies have really tightened up here and they can go up by five. Time once again for Regina to call a timeout here and settle down the troops a little bit. He's starting to take a couple of shots from outside that they don't need to take. Sweet Apple felt a bit of pressure there from Bram Russell. Lasaga down to Russell. Lasaga gets it back, top of the key. Michael Clark comes over, knocks it away from Russell. Pass goes off at Crosley. Crosley goes up with it and is fouled. May have had Shannon Richards there, came over to try and help, and he did and draw Richards the foul. Will. That's two for him, so he's in no danger, and a timeout is called by the Knights. Herdman leads 66-63. Blake Crosley will be on the line shooting two. Just did the last foul here. Crosley driving to the basket. Certainly both sections of fans here, the Regina fans to our left of the broadcast table and the Herman fans to our right are certainly starting to cheer things up a little bit. A couple of head cheerleaders out on the floor, I guess, for both squads. Yeah, we see plenty of uh, these guys for Herman and there's a couple of other biggies for uh, Regina and they're really, really into it. Great to see. And there's your Regina. The main cheerleader there getting things stirred up. Michael Buckle doing a good job of getting the crowd fired up here. The Regina fans. And now the Herman squad likes to call a timeout. They obviously didn't get enough time to go over their strategy for the final two minutes and 34 seconds. So Mike Barrett calls a timeout. Trying to figure out what he will have his team do for the remainder of this contest, currently holding a three-point lead. 
And as we mentioned, the Regina Knights need a victory here. A win by the Herman Huskies will give them the city championship for the second year in a row. Regina wins will go to game five on Monday afternoon at 4.30 p.m. at Sir Wilfred Grenfell, the Grenfell College. And as usual, Cable Atlantic will be on hand for that one. It's going to be interesting to see. Hopefully, Ed Buckle told his Regina Knight players not to take too many dangerous shots from three-point range or from well outside. They've got to work that ball in. They're only down by three points. Still plenty of time left in this contest. They've got to work the ball more to the inside, more to Crosley and more to Russell, and get those easy inside shots rather than taking shots from well outside. Crosley missed the first shot. Frank White was in there thinking that it may have been one and one, but that is not the case. He'll try again. An important foul shot here. Crosley hits that one. 20 points for Blake. Sweet Apple is 23. There are your game high scores. 2.25 to go. Herman Huskies holding a two point advantage. Piercy to Sweet Apple. Back out to Richards. Shots up. Good. Shannon Richards with a very big basket indeed. Puts a lot of pressure on the Knights to score on this particular possession. Crosley looking for help. TJ Power. Piercy on the push. He'll be called for the foul. Under two minutes to go. 159 to go. Husky 68, Knights 64. And Dean Porter will check into this contest for Mark Smallwood. Certainly they want the defense of Dean Porter out there for the remainder of this game. The Saginaw. Crosley will take Sweet Apple. Misses. And now the Huskies would do wisely to try to eat a bit of clock. Piercy, minute 30 and counting. Shannon Richards to Piercy. Tries a two-pointer. No good. And there's Porter with the rebound. Sweet Apple misses. One ten to go. Sweet Apple with the foul. Looked like he almost got over with the block, but he did get a piece of the shooter. That's four on him. And the Huskies missed a couple of glorious chances to almost salt it away. And they're going to count that basket. Gutsy call by the official there, counting the two. And TJ Power will go to the line and try to make this a three-point play. I actually didn't think that ball went in. Now, I'm not sure if referee Sean Bennett and Billy Allen might have called goaltending on that last one, but the ball definitely didn't go in the hoop off a Regina player. Power misses. Getting down to the last minute. 68-66, another barn burner. Power called on the foul. Put a deadly man at the line and Shannon Richards. 55 seconds left. Both these crowds now. Shannon Richards needs both shots. Four-point lead for the Herdman would be tremendous for them right now. Richards hits it, and that's 15 points for him. Still has one to go. Three-point lead for Regina. Huskies up by three. 69, 66, 55 seconds to go. And this is a very large free throw looming in the wings here for Shannon Richards. 
Richards and Sweet Apple have combined for 38 points. Shot's no good. Frank White the rebound. The Saga has it. Now they have time done. Uh, will they go for the three or will they try for the two? Ball is picked out of bounds. Well, they really don't need to go for a three-point play. There's still 48 seconds left. Lots of time in this, this contest. If they can get the ball in, in a hurry here now for a two-point shot, they'll force Herdman to come down. They'll, then they'll try to cause a turnover. But if, they don't, if Regina doesn't waste too much time putting this ball up, Herdman won't be able to come down and kill the clock. They'll only have 30 seconds to do that. Here's another battle of the crowd levels to see who's the loudest. Always a bit of one-upmanship here. Certainly, Rick wins for another fantastic finish here, and I, I'm pretty well safe to say that no matter how this game turns out, you're going to hear quite a vocal display from one section of this building anyway. And if the Herdman Collegiate Huskies happen to win here this afternoon and take the city championship, I think the, uh, the fans are sure to let us know. Well, I mean, there's probably some times when you wonder how this how this series has gotten to the level that it's at when it comes to participation and excitement. I think these last four games have been a very, very good indication as to why this series brings out so much uh, excitement and anticipation year in and year out. And there's still a long way to go. Frank White now, over to TJ Power. Power to Russell. He may look to take it, Power. Inside, time a factor. Russell goes inside and gets the bucket. Graham Russell with 14. 69-68 is the score. Herdman calls a timeout. Quick off the bench. And Ed Buckle complaining. Five seconds went off the clock. After that last basket, Bob Richards immediately called the timeout for Herdman, and the clock kept running, so they'll reset that to 30 seconds. And that's a big 30 seconds. So I think Regina wasted a little too much time there. Herdman now can come down and kill the clock if possible, but Regina can try to strip that ball, or maybe Ed Buck was telling his team, go to the foul, take the foul, give them a shot one-on-one. -on -one and hope that they don't meet with success on the foul line. There's certainly any, any number of options open to Regina right now. Haven't we been here before? <laughs> Another fantastic finish. There you see it. There's the story of the game. 69-68, Herdman, 30 seconds left to play. Both teams in the bonus situation. No fouls to give. Michael Clark has it. Good man to have with the ball. Porter, they might go after him. Porter is fouled by TJ Power. It was interesting to see when Michael Clark had the ball, Ted Buckle was saying, don't foul, don't foul. But when Dean Porter got the ball, they were saying foul. That's the foul the man they wanted to take to get that turnover. They're hoping Porter is not a good free throw shooter as some of the other guys like a Shannon Richards or a Michael Clark. He's the man you want to have at the line and hope something happens here to cause the turnover. No good. 20 seconds left. Regina's got time for one shot. They can play for the final shot to win this game. They only need two. Down to 10. Power with it. Drives. Goes up with it. Rebound. And the Huskies win it. The Herdman Huskies. Three games to one, an incredible finish. T.J. Power tried to win it. Well, certainly there's probably no player who's feeling more badly right now than T.J. Power. He tried to win it for the Regina Knights on a couple of shots. The last one, a desperation shot. As we see the Herdman fans celebrating. But a little desperation shot for the Herdman Husky, or for the Regina Knights, rather, and it just didn't sink. Hard luck there for young T.J. Power, but the Herman Huskies for the second year in a row with the Cornerback Boys High School Basketball Championships winning 69-68 here this afternoon in game four to take the series three games to one.
We'll be back with the post-game show and wrap up of this whole series right after this break. Body Break with Hal Jones. This is Cable Atlantic Cable 9, your community channel. And back here at Regina High School where the Herman Collegiate Huskies have just wrapped up the Quinnebrook High School Boys Basketball Championship, beating the Regina Knights 69-68 in the fourth game of the Best of Five series. Mark Sweetapple is a big man for the uh, Herman Huskies this game. Mark, uh, you finally got your game on track and uh, had your best game so far in the series. Uh, how do you feel after the big win? Um, we're happy with the win. Uh, the guards, our guards were giving me the ball in good position, so I had uh, quite a few layups, which, uh, which is really how I got most of my points. But uh, we're quite pleased with the win, and we're looking forward to the provincial now next weekend. And Coach Mike Barrett, you've also got to be happy. This is something I guess your team has uh, worked hard for all year, and uh, a couple of times earlier in the year you lost to Regina in various invitational tournaments, but uh, you made it pay off when it counts. I am really pleased with the boys. This is the first time in a number of years that we've been able to actually win here in Regina in a cr critical game. We've won against other teams, but against Regina, this is a hard place to win. The fan support is absolutely unreal, and of course, Regina is a great team. Um, my boys came out today. They didn't dig a hole, which uh, I was very pleased with. My uh, young guards kept their head. They got the ball inside to my big men, and they shot well, and I was very, very pleased. I guess now you're going to prepare for the Provincial 4A Championships coming up very soon here in Cornerbrook. Actually, we're practicing tomorrow night. We're beginning for that. As tired as we are, we have to get right on with it because uh, the 4A is next Thursday. It begins. And we'll be opening against, I suspect, either Mount Pearl or Beaconsfield, whoever, uh, one of those two teams anyway. And uh, that's going to be a tough matchup. Okay, Mike Barrett, Mark Sweetapple, thanks very much. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll call in Rick Lafitte now for his final comments here. And certainly, Rick, a, a great contest here between both clubs here this afternoon. And Herman uh, just uh, pulled it off at the end. Well, what more can you say? Uh, an absolutely tremendous finish, uh, a tremendous series. The Huskies winning it, deserving champions. The Knights giving it all they had. No excuses. Came down to the end. The try by power just failed. And uh, just a great way to wrap things up. Really enjoyed uh, doing these games. And uh, hopefully we'll be back again uh, next year to uh, give more of the same. Well, certainly it was a great opportunity to broadcast these games. High school basketball, exciting here in Quarterbrook, as you can see by uh, the fan spectators here this afternoon and all week long. So that's it from Regina High School. On behalf of Rick Lafitte, I'm Don Bradshaw. We'll see you down the road. Uh -huh.